It's that time of year again. A time when folks around the globe dress up as their favorite character, host theme parties and movie marathons, and uphold the spirit of their favorite film franchise. I'm of course talking about May the 4th. May 4th has become known as Star Wars Day, an unofficial holiday that gets its origin from a line of dialogue in George Lucas's blockbuster saga. The saying crops up regularly in the films, books, video games, and across the Star Wars universe. A universe still relevant in the new paranormal. This episode will unapologetically celebrate Star Wars by introducing you to a gal who has created my absolute favorite cosplay getup. Please welcome. Elizabeth Huddy. Elizabeth, what got you into cosplay? Yeah, um, I originally got into cosplay when I was about 12 or 13, and I started going to the midnight premieres of different movies dressed up. So it was kind of a big thing back then, people would dress up. So I went to Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, and I that's when I started making costumes from scratch to go to those things. And I would do parties at the same time that had themed food from the different movies and just made a whole whole thing of it and it was a lot of fun getting into the the characters and then it was only about five or six years ago that um I really discovered comic-con and all these different cons in general and I wish I had known about them so much sooner but as soon as I found them I I loved it and so we've been going for about five or six years and uh the first few years I just went and admired all the costumes and had fun and then um this, these last few years, I've done increasingly complex costumes and, uh, you know, ramping up with the Tauntaun puppet was my most elaborate one that I've done. I absolutely love puppets. You know, I'm something of a puppet builder myself. What is the story behind your baby Tauntaun puppet? The story behind the Tauntaun puppet is that I was actually working on a completely different cosplay for Rose City Comic Con last year. And it it was massively elaborate and I got in so far over my head. And so I had about a month, I want to say, before Rose City. And I thought, I have to pivot. I can't finish this in time. And um, so I kind of went back into what I was really comfortable with, which was mixed medium creature creation. And I thought, okay, I had wanted to do a puppet for a while. Um, he's actually my first puppet. He's not my first creature, but he's the first one that is a puppet. And so um, I thought, you know, what's something that I can knock out fast, but was is still going to be fun and good and I could compete in the cosplay competition. And so I pivoted really hard. I totally scrapped my other costume that I had been working on and I had spent so many hours on that cosplay and I just, I ditched it. I just pivoted. And, um, and I went down the list of movies that I really liked that had interesting creatures. And I went, went back and forth between an Ewok, like a baby Ewok puppet and a Tauntaun. And, but then I thought, you know, no one has ever um, done a Tauntaun that I've seen before. And so that seemed more fun and unique to me. And so, yeah, I went in that direction. So I busted them out pretty fast. It was about three or four weeks. I learned a lot along the way from from doing him but that's kind of where he evolved from it's just he was actually a pivot from another costume like in there? Is it lukewarm? <laughs> but seriously, how on earth did you build that thing? Okay, so the process of building the Tauntaun started with um, a foam core. So it's like basically um, cushion foam for the inside. I wanted to make him really light and squishy. So his body is sculpted out of cushion foam with a hollow for my arm to go in. Then his head was also cushion foam as the base, but then I plasticized it with like a two-part plastic. And then on top of that, I used epoxy sculpt to do all of the details. 
And um, that ended up being a pretty big mistake, actually, because it got really heavy. Um, and I thought it wouldn't be too heavy. It's only a couple pounds. But when you have it on your wrist all day, it's really heavy. But you live and learn. And so I did most of his head with epoxy sculpt. And then he has, uh, I'm going to hold him up here. He's got a base of um, like a kind of beigey base coat. And then I did, did lots of washes of color. So um, with pastels and um, acrylics and things like that, just lots of color washes and then use like a ultra gloss for his nose and eyes so that he always kind of looked like he had, you know, moist um, nostrils and eyes. And then his ears are polymer clay and I actually used a um, red yarn. So I did a kind of flesh tone polymer clay and then shredded some red yarn really thin like veins and then covered it with a translucent layer and baked it. And that gives his ears kind of a see-through look. So if they're held up to the light or at least before the fur was on, um, you could kind of see the light through the veins of his ears, which was a lot of fun. Um, so his head took the longest amount of time for sure. And then, oh yeah, his little tongue here, he's got um, like a squishy silicone tongue and his teeth are a combination of translucent clay and then also some agates that I found outside and they look like teeth. And so I thought I'll stick them in his mouth. Um, and then he's got wool as the, um, as his fur, it's, it's actual sheep's wool. So it's really soft. It was all about really the head mostly. And then, you know, the body was, is foam with the fur, but because it has such curly proliferations of fur, a lot of it isn't as detailed as the face. At Rose City Comic Con, where um, I premiered him, he didn't have any sounds. He was just a puppet and I would interact with people. But then between Rose City Comic Con and Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle, um, someone named Jake Smith from California reached out and said, do you want me to build a sound box? And so we kind of collaborated on that. And he built this fantastic sound system that has a little speaker and button controls. And so then later um, he had sounds, he had little tauntaun sounds, which made him even more interactive, which was really fun. Did it sound like this? <laughs> I'm sure it did. Please continue. I would say it probably took about 40 to 50 hours um, to build him. So I just, I kind of crammed that all into about a month. That is fantastic. Okay, okay, that's enough ventriloquism for today. I'll leave the puppeteering to the professionals. Elizabeth, when you first premiered your Tauntaun cosplay, what was the response like? Yeah, um, at Rose City Comic Con, where he first premiered, it was so much fun interacting with everyone. Um, I went into the weekend thinking that the highlight for me would be the um, cosplay competition. And that was incredible amount of fun. But the most fun part by far was just walking the floor of the con and interacting with people and um, surprising people with the fact that he moved. And um, I, I didn't count on the, how funny it would be to see people's reactions because people would do so many double takes and grabbing their friend's arms and saying, oh my gosh, it just moved. Um, and so my favorite thing, my very favorite thing was to kind of, you know, walk down the, you know, mass of hundreds of people and I would see someone see the puppet and they would, you know, lock eyes with the puppet and I would pretend to look at something else like, oh, I'm going to look at this booth over here. And then I would really make the puppet engage with them, but with me not paying attention. And so it really created this illusion, especially later when he had his little sound box in his throat, because then he could make noises at them and, Ooh. um, it was, it was really great just to see people react and laugh and engage with him. And, you know, um, it, it was a lot of fun. That was the most fun part, I think, of um, bringing him out into the cons. I cosplayed as a screwdriver once. It wasn't the best costume, but I still turned a lot of heads. <laughs> I'm sure having a puppet like that on you for an entire day has its horror stories. What are some of the less desirable aspects of this particular cosplay? Some of the less desirable aspects of this cosplay are that he's just very uncomfortable to wear. Uh, I'm sure, as you know, you know, doing other puppets because the fake arm illusion is what made it particularly hard. So the fake arm got to be comfortably around the tauntaun and then my arm had to be wedged in. So my elbow was in and my wrist was down and I had to kind of articulate my wrist this way to engage with people. And um, I hadn't accounted for the weight of the head. And so um, my wrist would go numb and I'd have to give it a break because my wrists and arm would go numb. And one time after a long stretch of hours um, where I couldn't take it off um, at the cosplay competition, I 
took my wrist out afterwards and I couldn't actually unbend it. So I had to use my other hand to straighten it out and stretch the fingers until circulation came back. So the arm part was really uncomfortable. Um, and then it's all connected because of the fake arm illusion. And so, you know, the hand is wired into the tauntaun, which is connected to the fake arm, which is connected to my one piece jumpsuit. So if I wanted to eat lunch or use the bathroom, he was totally connected. And it was this whole ordeal to get him off, but then he's still attached. And it was just really kind of cumbersome, uh, especially eating lunch at the table. It probably looked so bizarre because I'm sitting there eating lunch and he's just this puddle of fur flopped on the table next to me and I couldn't disconnect him. So it just, it looked odd. Um, but yeah, it was so much fun to wear, but it was incredibly uncomfortable to wear. I once went to a con dressed as a shark. The novelty was wearing a little fin. <laughs> Can you talk about your other creature creations? Yeah, um, I think my my style of creature creation definitely tends toward the hyper-realist. So I really like to try to get as realistic as possible. And so I've seen an evolution of my creations over the years as I've learned new skills and been able to achieve more and more realism. Um, so the more real I can get, the more excited I am about the project. Um, and I use all different kinds of mediums. So, you know, clay and, and fur and, um, you know, faux fur and eye glass eyes. And I even use um, chocolate. Sometimes my latest creation was a cake that had an alien coming out of it. So I use modeling chocolate and isomalt. And so any material that I can use to make a creature and try to make it look as realistic as possible, um, is just fascinating to me. So my next goal is to branch out into silicone and individual hair punching and, you know, washes of the heat set paints that just look incredibly real. So the more real I can get with a, a creature, the more it feels like it's um, honing in on my personal style. Why creatures, Elizabeth? What is it about imaginary beings that fascinates you? I, I think my fascination personally with creatures goes all the way back to childhood, you know, pretending my stuffed animals were alive and that kind of thing when you're really little. And I just love how um, creatures can kind of draw you in. So especially seeing at Comic-Con where people, and I think it's something about the eyes too of a creature. So people would be walking the floor and then suddenly they would lock eyes with this puppet and you feel seen and, and startled and kind of connected. So um, I feel like creatures and animals, um, you know, there is a connection there because they do have, um, you know, these faces that really look at you. And so um, it's kind of fascinating. And fantasy creatures are really interesting to me specifically because it's not something that you can see in the real world. And you know, pet them and go see them at the zoo. And so to bring them to life in, in some way where you feel like you can pet a baby Tauntaun. I mean, you have these experiences that are kind of mythical fantasy experiences. And for me, that brings me back to a childlike sense of wonder because it's like engaging with things in the world that aren't really real, but you can kind of get a taste of what the world would be like if they were real. And um, I think that's exciting and it, you know, makes me feel alive. And I think, uh, I hope that it makes other people feel alive to engage with that as well. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Elizabeth, it's time for the lightning round. Go. Favorite movie. Uh, my favorite movie is Fellowship of the Ring. Favorite non-Star Wars puppet. Anything created by Stan Winston Studios, so especially the rod puppets from uh, like Jurassic Park and uh, the classics like that, or Rick Baker and uh, Men in Black, all those kind of crazy alien puppets and rod puppets and cables and all of that. Last book you read? Last book I read, I'm right in the middle of uh, Le Leviathan Wakes by James S. A. Corey. Weirdest compliment you received as a cosplayer? The weirdest compliment or comment, um, a lot of people, so many people said the Tauntaun was creepy, but in a good way. So they would be, you know, laughing and engaging and they would kind of, you know, touch him and then pull back and say, he's so creepy. But it was such a compliment because they were creeped out by how real he was. So it's the only time I've ever heard creepy used as a compliment. Most impressive cosplay you've seen in person. At Emerald City Comic Con, when I was backstage uh, for the cosplay competition, it was this hallway full of all the competitors and it was just incredible cosplay after incredible cosplay all the way down. And so I was 
kind of in awe looking at all of them. But the one that stood out the most was uh, the one that actually took first and she's going on to Chicago, I think, to compete there. And um, it was someone called the Honest Cosplayer and she did this take on um, the alien from the alien movies, uh, the xenomorph. Um, and she had this really original concept that had all different kinds of materials and the scope of it was really big and it had lights. And I was just super impressed. And I was so glad I got to see that one up close in person. It was, it was phenomenal. That is impressive. Thank you, Elizabeth, for shooting the sheet with me today. Thanks. Bye bye. Have a great day. My friends, I must ghost you for now. Until next time. Goodbye!